Hey, what's up you guys? This is Larian Garbazov and you are watching the Kaggle Code Review Show. Today we'll do the new competition and the Kaggle together with you uh, will uh, review the code of the digit recognizer. It's uh, the basic of the convolutional neural networks. Let's do it! Digit recognizer competition. It's a computer vision competition. It's the basics of the convolutional neural networks. Uh, we would have the hello world data, data set of the uh, digits from zero to nine. Uh, and uh, from these uh, digits, uh, from these frames, uh, we would uh, make a, a classification uh, of uh, the uh, picture uh, for, uh, and the classification would be uh, in uh, 10 digits from zero to nine, okay? So uh, our goal is uh, to identify digits uh, and uh, make a, a prediction for uh, the column in a data set. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it. And as usual, we wanna uh, tell thanks to the author of the code. Uh, I found it on the Kaggle. It was one of the uh, most uh, commented on the on this competition and the author is Yasin Gozam. It's a data scientist from Paris. Yasin Gozam, thank you. For the code review we would uh, use uh, Google Colab. Okay, let's dive in. So uh, we uh, Yasin uh, divided these two five parts, the introduction, uh, data preparation, uh, where we need to load the data, check for missing values, normalization of the data, reshaping it, uh, flatten uh, label encoding. So we uh, would split training and uh, validation data set. Then we would, uh, at the third part, we would uh, define the model, uh, augment the data, uh, at the first part, we would evaluate the model, uh, training and validation, uh, plot training and validation curves, and submit the prediction as the last part of this competition. So the uh, introduction. Okay, first of all, we uh, need to load the libraries, pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, Matplotlib in line, magic. Uh, from sklearn, uh, we would import uh, train test split matrix, uh, the confusion matrix. And uh, we would uh, use Keras uh, with a TensorFlow backend uh, to uh, make a sequential neural network model, the convolution of a neural network. Okay, so we load uh, the libraries, then we need to uh, load the data. We uh, would, as usual, uh, use uh, Kaggle API. And we would use uh, it to uh, load the data. Let's check uh, the name of the uh, competition to load it from the uh, API. So the name of the competition is Digit Recognizer. And let's load uh, the data to the content uh, path. And the data is in the zip uh, format, so we need to unzip it. And uh, finally, when it's unzipped, we need to uh, load it by pandas. And we can uh, see uh, how it's distributed from 0 to 9. And uh, we would check the uh, shape of a train uh, data set and uh, the target. At the second part, we uh, would check the data for the missing values. So uh, there is no missing values at this data set. The data set is good. Uh, and uh, the uh, data set comes uh, uh, 
comes with not normalized values. So we need, uh, when we use a uh, convolutional neural network, it's better that we normalize uh, the input data. So we need to normalize it by uh, division the train data and the test data as one D vectors. Uh, we would reshape it as a frame for conv uh, convolutional uh, neural networks, for uh, convolutions, to take uh, convolutions on it. So we would flatten uh, it uh, in the soft max layer uh, later. So when uh, we reshaped it for convolutions, we would uh, encode labels to categorical. Labels are 10 digits numbers. We need to encode these labels to one hot vectors to make uh, uh, at the end a softmax prediction. Uh, then we need to split the train and the validation set for the fitting. We'll uh, uh, take uh, uh, 0.1 uh, test size. So we can uh, get a better sense for one of these examples uh, by visualizing the image and looking at the label. So here is the type of the image. We, uh, we can plot it. And we see that the label uh, is 8. So here is uh, uh, how it looks uh, like. Okay, then let's define the model. So we would use Keras as a sequential. Uh, the first layer would be a convolutional 2D layer with uh, 32 filters and the uh, five by five kernel size with the same padding and the ReLU activation. And uh, as you remember, our input shape is a frame of 28 on 28 uh, on the grayscale. Uh, the second layer uh, would be uh, the same uh, as the first layer. And uh, then we would use a max pooling layer, uh, uh, the dropout. And uh, then we would use convolutional uh, neural networks with the 64 filters and kernel size, kernel size three by three and the same padding and uh, all the activations would be rarely. Uh, we, we use uh, convolutional, max pooling, dropout, then we flatten uh, the result and use dense layer uh, for learning with uh, 256 uh, neurons, dropout, and uh, finally we use uh, softmax with uh, uh, 10 neurons. Okay, uh, that is the model, how it looks like. Uh, let's set the optimizer. Uh, the optimizer uh, would be RMS prop with a, a learning rate epsilon decay. And finally, we need to compile the model with a, a categorical cross entropy loss, and our metrics would be accuracy. We would use uh, a learning rate uh, reduction, a reduce a learning rate on plateau, and we would uh, monitor uh, accuracy on the validation uh, data set. We would do it uh, on three epochs uh, to make it fast, and the batch and the batch size would be eighty six. Okay, so we want to avoid the overfitting problem and we can uh, do it by uh, data augmentation. So we would um, uh, use the uh, data, uh, image uh, data generator from the Keras. And uh, for the data augmentation, uh, we would use randomly rotate some training images, randomly zoom it, randomly shift images horizontally and vertically. 
and we uh, would do it with a uh, image data generator from Keras. So finally, we need to uh, feed uh, the uh, training data set and uh, feed the model. So as you remember, we got three epochs, uh, 86 batch size, steps per epoch, uh, and uh, the callbacks uh, that uh, we defined in the uh, learning rate uh, reduction because we uh, reduct uh, the learning rate each step, each step. So for the uh, first epoch, we got uh, accuracy 86. And you see that we got a accuracy 95, 96 on the second epoch. And uh, it's on training data set. And uh, it's uh, even better on the uh, validation uh, data set. After feeding the model, we want to evaluate, uh, evaluate it and uh, let's plot uh, the loss and the accuracy on the training and the uh, validation data sets. So we see that the loss is going down, uh, the um, accuracy rate is going up, so everything is good. Uh, the uh, model reaches almost 99% accuracy on the uh, validation data set after two epochs, and the validation accuracy is greater than the training accuracy uh, every time during the training. That means that our model uh, doesn't over overfit. And uh, for not overfitting, we augment the data, we uh, make uh, the dropouts in the model architecture. So uh, our model is uh, very well trained. Uh, and after the classification, uh, we can upload the confusion matrix. So let's do it. And we'll see that our CNN uh, performs very well on all digits. Uh, but we got uh, little problems with a 9 and 7. So let's investigate it and display some uh, errors. And we see that it's even people can be confused uh, with uh, predicted and true labels. And uh, finally, we uh, would uh, predict it for the test data set and make a submission. So if you liked my uh, video about a convolutional neural networks and about Kaggle competition, push the like button, subscribe, and make your skills better. Thank you.